Up next is Lukasz Piotkowski, a Kubernetes platform architect from Giant Swarm, talking about a full cloud native observability stack that can be used to get monitoring data from a non orchestrated microservices architecture oriented application. Hello, everyone. My name is Lukasz Piotkowski, and I work as a Kubernetes platform architect at Giant Swarm with teams that are responsible for providing managed apps to our customers. And one of our missions was to provide our customers with an open source independent observability stack. And here in this presentation, I'm going to share my experience that comes from this job about what can we do with cloud native observability tools, what we can get from them without changing our code. So if there's no free lunch, can we get anything for free like a sandwich? Uh, our plan is pretty straightforward. First, a short introduction. I will tell you just a few words around what observability is. And then we will move to our open source observability stack. I will tell you what composes the stack, what are the main data sources that we will use, and the main point of this presentation, what we can get for free. And this will be based on an example of a simple to-do management app. So let's get started. First of all, what is observability? Because this has become a kind of a buzzword recently. So as a basic definition, observability is a measure that tells you how well you can tell how your system is beha behaving and performing based on its internal outputs. So basically we treat a system as a black box and by observing what comes out of this black box, we try to find out what is happening inside. Uh, it doesn't really mean anything more specific than that. It's just a property of a system. Still, so a question may, may be asked, how is it different from monitoring? So observability is a property of a system. Monitoring is a process where we collect data exposed by the system and save it, analyze it, and this usually historically associated with metrics and logs. The important difference is also that observability also involves all the aspects, all the tools that will make your app observable, your system observable, okay? But also nowadays, as I said, it's kind of a buzzword and it simply means sometimes a better monitoring. If better, then how? First of all, observability tries to use as many data uh, sources as possible. So usually old monitoring systems were mainly about metrics, sometimes also logs, or they were trying to combine them. But now in observability, we try to use any data that comes out of the system that we can gather and we can deduct something from. Also, the important property is that we try to correlate different data sources. So we try to use a synergy effect between them to better understand what is going inside our black box. And obviously by doing all of that, we just want to be able to investigate issues in our system faster. So now let me move to our open source observability stack. There are many different, like I said, properties or data that can come out of the system that we can observe. But usually in observability, people are focusing on three main data sources, which are logs. So basically text information that is saved either to standard output or some text files. Metrics, which are numeric data that describe properties of a system. And traces, which show how a single request travels through a distributed multi-services system. There are obviously other things we can observe, other things that we can monitor and gather. For example, there are already some projects that try to collect distributed stack traces out of applications. But usually in observability, tools focus on these three main data sources. Traces being the newest one. And because they are not that common yet, I'd like to spend just a minute or two explaining what they are. So basically in a distributed system, like, like over here or microservice architected system, we have multiple services doing calls to each other to process a single request. The idea now is that when this request enters our system for the first time, 
we assign it a unique ID. And this unique ID is used in all subsequent services calls. So if service A calls service B, it is passing the same unique ID of this request from A to B and the same to E and so on recursively. Uh, each service then records when a specific request with a specified unique ID enters and leaves the service. And all of them are sending that information to a common data storage where as a result, we can query them and get graphs like the one on the right side. So we can see how a single request traveled through our system and where it spent how much time. There, are, there were basically two most common observability frameworks. There were open census and open tracing, but now they are almost merged into the open telemetry project, which is great because this means that now we have a single open source standard for gathering traces and in general telemetry data. So when we know what we want to gather and process in our observability system, it's time to pick tools that can do that. Uh, so over here is my opinionated choice of the observability stack, which is composed of the following projects. First of all, something to collect metrics. And over here, this is just uh, an open source de facto standard, Prometheus. Uh, more specifically, I recommend over here to use Prometheus operator, because if we're talking Kubernetes, it is really convenient to have an operator and that's a, that's a good one. Then we need to collect logs. Uh, so to collect, uh, collect logs from all the services, we'll use Loki. This is probably not the most popular logging project yet. It's a new player, but it is really lightweight. It can, it can be much cheaper than other solutions to maintain. It is open source uh, and comes from Grafana Labs, which is pretty useful in that sense that it, by definition, has a good um, integration with Grafana. For collecting traces, I've chosen Jaeger and Jaeger operator uh, because, well, the operator project, again, really great thing, allows you to easily deploy multiple Jaeger servers and makes operational part of it much easier. And then, well, the one and only Grafana as the dashboard to view all the data. So now we want to uh, now we know what we want to collect. We know which tools we can use to collect our observability data. But now the key question is how do I get data from my application to be stored, to be observed by those systems? And the sad answer is that there's no free lunch. You you have to adjust your app, you have to adjust your code to include observability features. So again, no free, no free lunch. Still, this presentation is about getting something for free. So is there anything at all that we can get for free without changing our code? And the answer is, yeah, no free lunch, but maybe we can get a sandwich on the house. To make it possible, let's add a service mesh to, to our mix. Why service mesh? Uh, as you probably know, service mesh is a kind of a smart distributed proxy that injects a proxy container into all of your pods that run your system. This means that it can do two things for us among other functionality that I will skip over here. First of all, if all our pods have a dedicated proxy and all the traffic from our pod travels through this proxy. This means our proxy knows exactly how much traffic with what result travels through the proxy. So basically, these are metrics. We can expose this data and make it available as a metric. Then also it knows when a request enters a proxy and when it does leave. So this sounds like traces. And that's the idea. We can, we can use service mesh as an observability provider that will proxy all the traffic, but also that will report metrics and traces for this traffic. And here the service mesh of choice is Linkerd because it has all the features that we need, but also is very performant and also for a service mesh really simple and easy to get started with. 
So now when we know what is in the mix, which tools we are going to use, let me just show you our application on display, which is a simple to-do management list, uh, to-do list management application. So we have three services over here. First one is API server, which is an HTTP frontend, does all the kind of authentication and then routes the um, actual call to a gRPC service that is called to-do manager. So actual business logic is performed by to-do manager, API server is, uh, API service is just a frontend. And then MySQL is a storage backend. The important thing is that this is a plain old, old application. There's no custom code to provide metrics, no custom code to provide tracing. It does logs, obviously, but they are simple text logs. So nothing fancy like JSON structured logs, plain old text logs. When we know already how our app looks like, and we know which tools we are going to use, now it's time for the actual recipe. And the recipe goes like this. We need to configure all of our tools to make them work with our application. Starting with Linkerd, we need to think about including everything that we need in a service mesh. This obviously includes our application, but this also includes Nginx Ingress Controller. I'm assuming we are using Nginx Ingress Controller for a Kubernetes cluster here, and that our traffic to our to the application will be driven by this um, Ingress Controller. Okay, so we include both of them, our application and our Ingress Controller. We also need to make sure that Linkerd can forward traces to our tracing solution, which is Jaeger. So we need to configure a bit to point to a Jaeger service where this data can be stored. You can find more uh, and some specific information about this configuration in the link provided. Next service we need to reconfigure slightly is Nginx Ingress Controller because Nginx Ingress Controller is tracing aware or can be aware of our traces. So we will get our traces started not only at our system, not at our at the at the border of our um, to the application, but already at the nginx ingress controller when the request enters our cluster for the first time. To do that again, we need to reconfigure nginx ingress controller and point it to to a um, basically tracing solution. In our case, Jaeger. Then we have Loki. Loki can be used as a central log storage, but also the prom tail agent, so the logging agent of uh, Loki can be configured to parse even plain old text logs and create attributes from them. So basically we all know that structured logs are nice because then we can do all kinds of queries and searches based on different um, attributes or labels that we can extract from our logs. But this is a new idea. This allows us to combine both. We can use regex to extract some structured information from plain text logs and then store them in our Loki server, which will make it much easier for us to search for our logs. And last but not least, our UI. So Grafana, we there need to, hold, uh, need to configure data sources and Grafana supports Prometheus, Jaeger and Loki, all of them, so we can combine them in a single dashboard. So this is what I just said, just as a picture. Over here, we have all the components of both our to-do application and all the services that we will use to observe the application, okay? So starting from our to-do application, we have our three deployments of API server, to-do manager, and MySQL. But because they are already included in the Linkerd service mesh, we can see that each pod has this small proxy over here, Linkerd proxy, that will forward all of our traffic incoming and outgoing from our actual container. And then we have on the left, Nginx Ingress Controller, which basically just forwards all our requests coming from our customers to the API service, but also sends traces to the uh, collector of, of the Jaeger of the tracing solution. Then each of the Linkerd proxies does the same. They can forward all the 
uh, tracing information to our tracing solution. Meanwhile, Linkerd monitors all the proxies to gather basic metrics and it stores those metrics. And at the same time, Loki through its Promptail um, uh, login agent watches for all the output of the containers and tries to sparse and store them in the Loki server. That's it, a bit complex, but again, we are trying to get something for free here. So time for an example. Let's see what we actually got. So again, plain old application, logs only, no metrics, no traces. And here's an overview of a Linkerd dashboard. As you can see, we have our app, we have very simple architecture. And at the very beginning, we see we have an issue with our application. So there are requests coming to the API server and we can already see that the success rate is not 100%, it is a bit lower. Probably something is wrong with our application. This is brand new, freshly deployed, but something is wrong. We can also see that over here we have P50 latency. This means 15th percentile latency. So basically it means that out of all the requests that are coming to our API server, 50%, so half of them, is responded faster than in three milliseconds. But 95, 95th% and 99th% percent are super slow, like thousand times slower, around three seconds. This is probably not good. We sometimes have big latency and our success ratio is also not 100%. There's something going on with our app, and we just learned it because we have checked our Linkerd dashboard. Do we know what is going wrong? No, we have no idea. Let's try to dig further then. First thing we check is history. So is it something new? Has this problem just started? Or how long does it last? Over here, we can see some history dashboard that shows that basically the problem is there for quite some time already. We have more or less constant success rate that is around 90%, maybe 90 something percent. A request ratio, request rate is flat as well. And here is the latency problem we are already seeing in Linkerd. Green line, so P50 is really, really low, basically flat line from this perspective. But P95 and P99 are really super high reaching sometimes three seconds. Okay, so we know that this problem is something more permanent and it, it, it is already lasting for some time. Let's see if we can learn something more. Next step, logs. Because we configured our Loki with Promptail to extract data from our plain text log files into labels, we can do a query that is asking about API server and well, we are not really interested in queries that come from kubeprobe because this is just health checks. And we try to check all the entries that are around request complete entry. Unfortunately, this is in this specific case, this is not really helpful. We can see a lot of data over here about the agent, uh, client's agent and everything. But unfortunately, going through logs in this case is not really useful for us we cannot learn much about the source of the problem we have from, uh, from Loki and from distributed logs. But well, this is only this time. What options do we still have left? Traces. And this looks interesting and confirms what we already know from, from basically Grafana and from Linkerd dashboard. Over here at the top, we have a graph each dot on this graph is a one trace, so one full history of a request traveling through our system. On the horizontal axis, there is real time, and on the vertical axis, there is uh, um, it shows how long this request spent in the system. As you can see, there's a good amount of requests that are really fast, so basically they are on the X axis, but there are also some outliers, like the one on the top over here, but also a few just above the X line, still distinct from those that were really fast. So let's try to dig in and see what we can learn from them. 
in Jaeger, we can click any of these trays to see graph like this. And over here, we see that we have a request that passed through some different services. Over here, it says Nginx. This is reported directly by, Ng by Nginx itself. And then we have information that comes from Linkerd proxies. So everything is included in a Linkerd proxy. Our application doesn't provide any tracing information, but the proxies do. So what we can learn? Uh, it seems that the whole request took around one second. So this, was, this wasn't as slow as the three seconds that we've seen previously. It was a bit faster, but still you can clearly tell that almost all of this time, almost the whole second is spent into this call, the last call to do manager. And over here we see this is a gRPC call URL. So basically this was spent in the to do manager service. So out of the two main services that we have, API server and to do manager, this time was definitely spent in to do manager. On the left, you can also see that this looks like um, two unrelated traces. They are related, but they are not fully related because, well, the problem is that in order for tracing to work, our API server, when it receives a request, it should extract that request tracing ID and include the same tracing ID in a request it is making to the to do manager service. Obviously, our assumption is that we are trying to get something for free, which means we are not touching our source code. We're deploying the app as it is and check what we can get. So this is basically what we can get. We, we won't get Tower without doing actual code changes, but we've learned something. We know that there is a problem and part of this problem are um, some, some requests that take a really long time, outliers that we've seen. And these outliers are definitely caused by the to-do manager service. So we narrowed the scope. Over here, we have just two services. So we eliminated just one. But imagine a, a system where you have three, 13, 40, uh, whatever, and you can narrow it down to a single service. It's already a big win. And we did this in just a few minutes. If you remember, there was also that outlier that was just slightly above the X axis. I opened this one as well. So the same graph, uh, real time on the X axis, on Y, uh, y axis, we have different co components. And what we can see over here is a different situation. This request wasn't that long. We, we are seeing that already. So it wasn't a second, it was around 100 milliseconds, but the pattern over here seems different. So over here, the to-do manager service is really fast. Overall, it took around seven milliseconds to respond, but around 90 milliseconds were spent in the to-do application, uh, which v v1 to-do means that this is our API server entry point. This is the URL handled by the service. So it's not in Nginx because Nginx passed the request on to, to API server really fast. It's not in to-do manager. Somehow our API server can spend around 90 milliseconds doing something before the request is passed along to, to the to-do manager service. Okay, so once again, not perfect, but we know something. We have something to start with. That's what we can get for free, our sandwich. Now, sure, that was a sandwich. It might have been tasty. tasty. The example, uh, well, worked. And we haven't changed a single line of code. We just used an application that was already deployed and used a stack of open source tools to make it observable or to increase its observability. Now you might be asking yourself, what if I can change my code? What if I can instrument the code? So just to show you how this can look like, well, we need to touch our code. This means that we need to change something. Our app needs to forward this tracing request, tracing ID request, uh, and need to emit this information, save it to, to our tracing solution. 
It sounds complex, but actually it's not because Thanks to the Open Telemetry project, which, like I said, is now the, the open source go-to solution for uh, for tracing, there is already a lot of open source libraries available that you can use to instrument your code. For all major programming languages, you will find a library that will make the instrumentation really easy. So my services were written in Golang, and I used a library that was available there, added it to my project. Uh, you can check the actual, actual code that I added under this URL. There's a blog entry that describes all the changes necessary to make this application um, emit traces. And that's the end result. So as you can see now on the left side, we have a consistent from to from to uh, way that our request was passed through our distributed system. This is the long call example, the one that on my previous screenshot took around one second. Over here, it is two seconds. And as you can see, now it's like perfectly clear. We see all the Linkerd proxies. We see API server component explicitly now. We also see our to-do manager component explicitly now. And also to-do manager component is registering a, a range, a, a time period that it calls DB list. So apparently this whole delay, almost all of the two seconds that we see over here, I spent are spent in the to-do manager service doing DB list. So probably this is a database problem. So we have figured out not only which service is responsible, but also which part of the service, which aspect of the service seems to be slow and cause this delay. Still, this is instrumented code and the meal we have to cook on our own. So to sum up, we briefly showed what is observability and what data sources, popular data sources we have in the observability area. Then I introduced you to an open source observability stack and all the components that you can find in the ecosystem. And we have checked what we can get for free. So we deployed an application that was not instrumented at all. It was a plain old application. And to use that big set of tools, to find out more about what is going wrong with this app and to help us um, resolve a problem that we have ongoing. We also briefly checked how to make our full launch. So how does it look like when we commit to changing our code and to instrument our code? I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to learn more, I wrote a whole blog service around building this application step by step and instrumenting this application step by step to make the final observability solution that I was demoing over here. If you're interested, go to my blog series and also the full code is available on our repositories. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach me either on Twitter or with email. Thank you once again. Thanks to Microsoft Azure and Equinix Metal for supporting us at the champion level. We also want to thank Red Hat and Slim.ai for funding us at our supporter level.